want to share uh, briefly from the Word of God before we pray. And I thought about this yesterday, and I said, wow, this is kind of interesting how we read this and we hear about it all the time. At least I did. From the time I was a child, I heard about the story of uh, Joshua. They even made songs about him. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Um, I thought about Joshua because I thought about prayer, and I thought about unity, and I thought about the power of unity. Uh, some of you all remember when you went to Sunday school, you remember the story of how Joshua led the people of God after Moses passed away, Joshua was called by God to be able to go into the promised land and to lead his people. Uh, when we see Joshua, uh, initially, he's a young man. He washes the hands of Moses, so to speak. He's a um, protege, disciple, whatever you want to call him, of Moses. And as a consequence, he walked with Moses very closely. And by the time Moses died, God had poured into Joshua the leadership skills, the insight, the understanding of leading his people through his walk with Moses. So he then called Joshua. He told Joshua, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. And so he sent Joshua across the promised land, across what we know as the Middle East, to conquer various areas that he was giving to the people of God. Uh, and when he went across, he encountered all kinds of circumstances. But each time, with the exception of one, where there was sin in the camp, um, he was victorious. But particularly, I'm thinking about the battle at Jericho. Because it really wasn't a physical battle. It was a spiritual battle. You can read about it in chapter 6 um, of the book of Joshua. And in essence, God called the people of God to go take over the city of Jericho, which was encircled by a huge, thick wall, one that was not penetrable typically by mankind. It kept the city secure. They would lock the wall, the gates, the city gates, as it were, each night. And nobody could get in and nobody could get out. But God said, this is your land, Joshua. Go take the land. But he did an unusual thing. He didn't tell Joshua to go and fight. He told him to take the people of God and march around the city seven times. And then on the seventh day, they would give out a great shout and the walls came tumbling down. And we know the story of Je uh, Joshua from this battle. Uh, but have we ever thought about it from the standpoint of the spiritual warfare and the unity and the power of unity that comes about in obeying, obeying God and obedience to God when we are on one accord in the spirit. I thought about this in terms of us on our prayer time. You might be, as I said, in Jacksonville, Mississippi. You might be in Hiroshi, Japan. You might be in South Carolina, wherever you might be. You might be in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. But if we obey God in unison, and come on one accord and do what God called us to do, there would be nothing impossible for us. And like that wall that stood between Joshua and the people of God and, and, and the promise of God, pardon me, the battle took place in the spirit because they never had to physically fight. How many know our weapons, our warfare is not carnal? The weapons of our warfare are mighty. They are able to demolish strongholds, but they are warred in the spirit. We don't go and fight fisticuffs. We don't cuss people out and fight with them and physically attack them. What we do is we apply the principles of God's word and we go in agreement with the Holy Ghost in prayer and then God destroys the strongholds. And I would venture to say to you that some of the things that we have had to deal with and tolerate have not been destroyed because of our lack of unity. I was sharing on the Women Connecting with Christ class about the testimony of Calvin 
who is a psalmist at Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. He was strung out on crack cocaine. He left his wife. He was living in a dog house. He was um, just in a pitiful way. Uh, all he would come out of that dog house was for to get more drugs or to go hustle to get money to get more drugs. And he said on this particular night, he was struggling to get high. Because what he didn't know was on the other side of town at Brooklyn Tabernacle, the church was laboring for him in prayer. The church was crying out for him. The church was lifting him up. And one of the things they prayed was, do not let him get any enjoyment out of the uh, drug anymore. That if he tries to get high, don't even let him get enjoyment out of it. Don't even let him get high off of it. In fact, they got so bold and bodacious, they began to pray, God, bring him here tonight. Bring him here right now. On the other side of town, here he was in a doghouse trying to get high, couldn't find any consolation in the, in the drugs, couldn't find any uh, comfort in it. It was no longer enjoyable. He couldn't get high. He said, but he felt a compel, a a pull, a compulsion to go and to, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, go and go straight to church. He got on the subway and he went to church. And they said, while they were praying, he came walking straight down the aisle like a bride. That thing just reverberated again in my spirit of what God has spoken to me early in the day about Joshua and the people of God. And if you read through it, you'll see that they marched around the, the, the um, the walls silently in unison. Every day they got up early in the morning and they walked and they walked and they walked. And when they did what God called them to do, God fought the battle and caused those walls to come tumbling down. And I just keep wondering how many times have we put up with stuff and tolerated stuff and seen loved ones called to glory prematurely or or lives destroyed or what have you because we didn't get on one accord and do what God called us to do. We didn't crowd in unison. We didn't seek God's face and agree in the spirit to see what God would do through the power of our prayers. And I'm challenging us today to link up with somebody. Yes, we come together virtually, but I'm saying get with somebody touch and agree with somebody i'm saying for the next just like they walked around seven days let's say for the next seven days we are going to touch and agree in the spirit over the prayer requests that are on that prayer wall we're going to touch and agree and cry out to god in unison that god will turn those situations around even without us making this specific uh, request. We got testimonies on there right now. One of my sisters had asked us to pray because her neighbor was suing her. She came back with the praise report. The case was dismissed because we got on one accord. How many people have been healed because we got on one accord? I'm saying I think we can take it to another level. Let's get in agreement. Let's be like Joshua in and his army and let's come in agreement, touching and agreeing with somebody and marching in the spirit around whatever that problem is. Put your prayer request on the prayer wall and for the next seven days, we are gonna circle around those prayer requests in unison, touching and agreeing, not only here on this prayer line, but let's connect with some people and pray to God that he would do exactly what we're crying out for him to do. And then let's come back in seven days and start seeing the praise reports come in for God having heard our cry. I just keep hearing in the spirit, there is a power in your unity and you have not magnified or, or maximized that power yet. You all are touching it, but you haven't maximized it yet is what I believe the Holy Ghost is telling me. So I'm saying, let's kick it up a notch. Get with somebody every day. Doesn't have to be at 316. If they can do it, then praise God. But if they can't, get with somebody every day and labor over the things in your life. Labor over the prayer requests that are being posted on the prayer wall. And then let's watch God change things. I want to see God show up in a way that we would say, surely the Lord has heard our cries. Surely the Lord our God is able. Surely there is nothing too hard for him. No matter how big the wall might look. 
You know, think about it. That wall, some say, was wide enough that you could ride horses, you know, spread across four, some say eight across around that wall. That wasn't a little, you know, picket fence. This was a major wall. And think of the Great Wall of China. It was huge. And yet God caused it to come down, not because they picked up hammers. They didn't have no bulldozers. They didn't have any dynamite. They didn't have any kind of means of tearing it down in the natural realm. But their prayers, think about that thing. Their silence and their unity caused that thing to come crashing back down. So let's touch and agree, saints. I'm challenging you. Here's our seven-day prayer request. We're going to post on the wall. We're going to greet with somebody in the natural, in person, in prayer, over every prayer request as well as our own. And then we're going to post the praise reports to see what our God has done. So even in the spirit of unity right now, we're going to crowd on one accord and see what God's going to do. Open the prayer uh, line now, so let's begin to cry out to our God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you this day. We come touching and agreeing in the spirit, God. You've given us the power of unity. You said even where we are on one accord, you command the blessing on our behalf. We thank you, God, in advance for every blessing that you were commanding us, every favor that you will bestow upon us. We're believing by faith for great things, oh God, in the lives of your people. We're believing, God, that you're going to tear down strongholds, that you're going to destroy mountains, that you're going to rip apart, uh, Lord God, barriers that have hindered us from walking in your divine will. God, where there's sickness, we lift up sick bodies before you today family members who are ill, family members who are going through, friends who are struggling, oh God, who hearts are racing, palpitating, even now, God, those who are having COVID-like symptoms, those who are experiencing diabetes and hypertension and neurological dysfunctions, even, oh God, anxiety. We cry, out, Father, for your divine healing to manifest itself, that you would move in a magnificent way, a mighty way, a phenomenal way to show up and show out. You told Sarah, is there anything too hard for our God? We're saying to you, oh God, we believe there is nothing too hard for you. We cry out to you, God, for the hearts that are broken today. There are many who are mourning and suffering, oh God, from loss. We lift up Wendy and uh, the Cloud family today, that you would comfort First Baptist staff and every person connected with Brent whose hearts are heavy today. Comfort as only you can. We lift up Tig, oh God, and we lift up Toto, oh God, and we lift up Jalen, oh God, and we lift up Brandon and Stephen, oh God, and Latif and all of our family as they mourn the passing of Cindy. Comfort every heart. I lift up my sister Evan. Comfort every heart, God and strengthen them for this season. You know exactly what we're dealing with. Your word says you're the God of all comfort. You will comfort us in all of our trouble. God, I lift up Mary Brown and her family. Comfort them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. You know every situation, every circumstance. We don't even have to articulate because you know our heart. You're able to see beyond the natural and into the spirit. Have mercy, oh God. Touch us and heal us. We cry out, God, for those who are in sick beds. Sick beds in hospitals, sick beds in nursing homes, sick beds on their own bed. God, have mercy on those who are struggling to breathe. Breathe on their lungs. Restore their health. Restore their strength. Move in a miraculous way. Turn it around, oh God, that they would know that they have had a divine visitation is my prayer. God, that you would move in situations where people don't even have a proper diagnosis. They don't know what's wrong, but we know you know. God, even my daughter, Gabrielle, I lift her. Whatever the enemy is trying to do, Father, counsel every assignment. Turn back the the uh, arrows back upon those who have sent them in the name of Jesus. God, that you would turn her heart, turn her mind, turn her physical well-being all toward you, that she would be made whole is my prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. I cry out, O King, for those who are struggling, Lord, in their peace, in their minds, God. Some are going through all kind of mental turmoil right now. I lift them up and I pray your peace, Holy One. I pray, Father, for Donetta 
Donita, Lord God, and, and Sammy, Lord God. I'm asking you for divine intervention. I'm believing you, God, that you are going to do a major work, that you're going to show up in such a way that they will know that your hand has been upon it, that she would have a job that super surpasses her expectation in such a way that she will give you the glory, that she'll be able to pay every bill, to have plenty in excess, to be able to tithe and give orphans and bless others, Lord, and prepare even for her future. I plead the blood of Jesus over Samuel, that you will promote her. We know promotion doesn't come from the north, the south, the east, nor the west. It comes from you, almighty God. And I'm speaking promotion over his life, that God, you would elevate him above his peers, above those who even question or doubt even his capacity as a man of God and don't understand his testimony. Show up, Lord God, and show them what it means to be favored by God. I thank you, God, for what you're doing in Beverly Archer's life and her family. I thank you for what you're doing, <coughs> oh God, and me sharing uh, Moore's aunt and her family. Bless them and keep them and comfort them. Bless, oh God, even now, Shirley, uh, Griffin's neighbor. We thank you for Martina being able to get up and go. Continue to strengthen her. Breathe on her. Reverse the curse of cancer in the name of Jesus. We curse every of oh God unclean cell. We ask you to convert everything that's not of you to a healthy and prosperous cell. That she would have life and have it to the full. Have life and have it abundantly. That she shall live and not die. That she shall live to cut. Oh God to give your name the glory and to declare your praises in all the earth in the mighty name of jesus god we thank you and we praise you we thank you god for every name on that prayer wall we believe by faith that there are things going on right now just like when they were walking around that wall they couldn't see it at the time they didn't understand it at the time but you were working behind the scenes every step they took God, even now, I decree every step we take is holy ground, that we conquer every territory for the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We believe you, Father, that you're doing a work even right now. We can't see it. We don't understand it, but we believe it by faith in the name of Jesus. We cry out, Holy One, in Jesus' name for uh, my cousin Deborah, Lord God. Bless uh, Darius Kelly and Raymond Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, drive out every form of mental illness in the name of Jesus, Father. I plead the blood of Jesus over their minds, over their hearts. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. I thank you, God, for hearing Joanne McDonald. Oh, God, and dismissing that case. We give you the glory, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you for allowing even Martina to get up and get out in the name of Jesus. We praise you and we thank you. We honor you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, God, for hearing our cry every single day. We thank you for what you're doing, Father. Even now, for uh, Beverly Archer's co-worker, that you would work it out that her eye will not require surgery. And just heal it in Jesus' name. Bless, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that lady, whoever she is, God, you know her circumstances. And we thank you, God, for continue to bless and heal and deliver and make provision for Maddie's friend, Father. We know that you're well able to give her a place where she can rest comfortably in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for what you're doing in our Sherry's life, even as we touch and agree, Father. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. I plead the blood of Jesus over every name here on this prayer wall. Bless Antoinette, God. Continue to heal her body in the name of Jesus. I bless you and I thank you. Hallelujah, 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 and amen. Bless every person, even now under the sound of my voice. We cry out in unison that you would have your way in our circumstances. And we believe by faith you're going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask a thing. We believe by faith that you're touching our families, that you're turning circumstances around, that you're making provision. Somebody has lack today. I pray for divine intervention. I pray for supernatural blessings that will be so phenomenal they won't have room enough to receive them. In the name of Jesus, move, Holy One, as only you can. We thank you for that even now in jesus name hallelujah hallelujah and amen we want to praise god 
for you if you've joined us today. And we want to encourage you, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to say yes to the Lord our God. If you want to know Christ as your Savior and be healed, and when I say healed, spiritually healed, meaning that your sins are all forgiven, you will go to heaven. You will spend your eternity with him, and you can have a relationship with him right here and right now. That's the beauty of being in Christ. We went on this side and we went on the other side. Praise God. If you want to accept Jesus as your Savior, I want to encourage you to pray this simple prayer with me. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died for every one of my sins. I believe you were buried and God has raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take control of my life. I repent of my sins and I'm turning to you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen and amen and amen. There is something about the name Jesus. It is the sweetest name I know. When you call on that name, there is no other name given unto men by which we can be saved. And so today, when you said Jesus, you were saved. Your name was written in the land's book of life. You are a child of the Most High God. So I want to encourage you. Get connected to a good church home so you can grow up and be all that God created you to be. Check out whosoeverbelieves.org, which is a, a platform where you can fellowship with others and grow and ask questions and share pictures, whatever you can do on other platforms, you can do there. But we will encourage you in the things of God. 